Hello, my name is Philip Fister. I'm a Lynn County Master Gardener. Today we're going to be building a compost bin that is a three bin turning unit. And this bin will be used at the Hiawatha Elementary School in Hiawatha, Iowa for the children's gardens. We will be building this bin following the directions in um, the composting yard waste pamphlet from Iowa State University. It's PM 683. And then included in this pamphlet is a complete instruction on how to build the street bin turning unit. From a bill of material standpoint, we have four 2x4s that are 12 feet long. We have four 2x4s that are 10 feet long. We have one 2x6 that is 12 feet long. We have our roll of quarter inch hardware cloth. We've got a number of pieces of hardware. Uh, these will all be used to fasten the bins together for assembly work. And then we have these beautiful cedar boards that will be cut down to 32 inch lengths. And they will actually be the slats that are used in the front of the bin to make it easy to remove the material and to turn the material from bin to bin. And the tools we'll be using today include saws. Uh, this is a circular saw, power or you can use a handsaw, or today we'll be using my personal favorite, and that is a miter saw. Uh, that just speeds the process along, as you'll see. We also need a three-quarter inch wrench. Um, we have a choice between using the socket wrench or an open-end box combination wrench. And we'll need two drills, one with an eighth inch bit, and that'll be to start the pilot holes for the uh, screws. The other is with a half inch bit, and this will be for the bolts to bolt the unit together. And we also need a pin snips, and this will be used to trim the hardware cloth to size. Our first step in this process of building the compost bin is to cut the two by fours that are 12 feet long down to two different sizes. One of the dimensions will be 33 inches long, the other will be 36 inches long. And the idea is that we're building a divider that is 36 inches square. So with that, I've made the setup for 33s. We'll go ahead and cut all four of the 2 by 4 down to our 33 dimensions first, and then we'll change the setup over to 36. Most important thing, safety glasses. And in my case, I like the hearing protection as well. Dividers all cut to size. We're now ready to start putting it together. First thing we want to do is to take the top pieces, and these are the ones that are cut off at 36 inches, and drill pilot holes for our screws. Sometimes the moisture in these boards makes it very difficult to drill some of these pilot holes through there. Okay, so we've just finished putting the frames, the dividers together. We have all four of them together. And as we've been going, we've been checking them for square. We'll check this one. And it measures 50 and 15 sixteenths. Check the diagonal. That's a quick way to tell how square it is. And it measures 50 and 15 sixteenths. So we are square. So we're done with assembling the dividers. Now we're ready to cut the hardware cloth. I've measured out 36 inches, and that puts me right on that mark that I made a nick in. Now I'll just follow the pattern all the way up to the end. You want to watch your fingers on this. The hardware cloth can be kind of sharp. And it also retains the memory of the roll, and so it wants to roll up all the time. After we have it cut, I happen to have a piece of scrap wood that was an inch and a half, and so I just use it to act as my guide. This helps us get a nice tight crimp on this, and that's important when you go in the frame. 
So now I'm ready to form up the ends, and I'll just come in and trim off, cut this back. Okay, and now we have it ready to insert into the frame. So we have cut our hardwood cloth to 36 inches long, and of course it's 36 inches high. And we've now formed each of the edges up an inch and a half. And it will now rest down inside of our frame. And it takes a little bit of coaxing to get it down there. And what we want to do is put it in the frame so that the hardware cloth is about halfway into the frame itself. And we'll put a staple every four inches or so. We're going to go ahead and cut the runners for the slats because we still have our saw set up for 36 inches and that's what this, these runners need to be cut to length. So we'll go ahead and cut these before we change the saw to cut the long uh, pieces. Now we've changed the saw over and we're ready to cut the long pieces that tie the bins together and they will be cut at 111 and a half inches. So I'll go ahead and make the cut now. Now I have repositioned the, the uh, fence and we're ready to cut the cedar slats at 32 inches. We have nine cedar boards to cut. Um, each one will be cut into 32 inch lengths. We are here at Hiawatha Elementary School where the compost bin will be located and the, the area that they have provided us is really well suited. We're very close to the gardens, which are just behind me, um, so they'll be easily accessible there. They're also uh, going to be right by the kitchen door, the back door to the kitchen, so any recycling that can be done in the kitchen can go right into the bin. Should make it usable and also um, easy to maintain. So we've cut down our uh, two by fours that were 10 feet long into lengths 111 inches and a half. And we're now ready to assemble our unit. I've already drilled uh, some pilot holes coming in off of the back of the board and I'm now going to drill the hole through our, our divider. This part of it, the assembly is being done to the bottom, and a nut, washer. Okay, go down and do the other end, and then we'll be ready to turn the unit over and go to work on the top. What we've done is slip them under the top rail. We've split the difference in where this is located, and we'll go ahead and drill our holes. Alright, so now we're putting the fabric on the back. This is our hardware cloth. Uh, we've rolled it out. We've kind of tacked it in place with some staples. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it to length. And then we're going to put the backboard on. So I'm just taking my pin snips again. Okay, we have it trimmed to length. We'll go ahead and drill the holes for our 111 inch and a half inch boards, two by fours. And we'll have the back on, and we'll put in staples every four inches along the hardware cloth to hold it tight in place. So we have the bottom rails in place. We put the back on, we put the wire in place. We actually put the wire on before we put the back board on because that gave us a nice surface for the wire to get stapled to. Just as a word of caution, when you're drilling the holes and you go through the wood into the hardware cost below, go very gently because if you catch it, it will wrap around it and tear your hardware cost. Uh, that's a lesson learned. We're now ready to put the top uh, rail on. I've measured back two and a half inches. I'll go ahead and drill 
the four holes for the half inch bolts along here. We've checked them from diagonals and we know that we're square. So we'll just go ahead and get this locked in place and then I'll tighten up all the bolts and then we'll be ready to go to work on the front uh, for the slats. So to put the center piece on, this is going to be centered on our vertical uh, frame. So I'm just making a mark at one and three quarters and a mark at two and three quarters. And that allows me to get my board centered up so that the slats will have an equal amount of space on either side to ride. And I'll do the same thing at the top. Get it lined up. And these are flush with the top of our board. Make my mark for my screws. And then it's the same as it was on the other one. Drill the holes, put the screws in place, and we'll have it anchored down. And then we just have one more step and we'll be ready to go. And all we need to do is find some material to put in our compost bin. So now we have the final piece that we need to install. And this will be the inside of the runner for the slats. Um, this happened to be trim off from the board that we had on the ends. And then I cut an additional uh, two pieces. They are cut one inch thick which just turns out to be the dimension that we need, so I can just put it up against there tight like that, drill my pilot hole, and install my screws. Pull my spacer out, and I have a one inch wide uh, space to drop our cedar boards in, or cedar slats in. And we'll just work our way down and have all these installed in just a second. All right, we're ready to wrap our project up. We've installed the uh, inside runners. And now we have the slats. These are our cedar boards that have been cut down to 32 inches. They just drop right down in that slot. Just like that, and that will hold all the material that you put into the bin. Here at Hiawatha Elementary, we'll be bringing over some of the material that is left over in the garden that we can compost. Of course, you don't want to use things like tomatoes or vine crops, which potentially can carry diseases. But uh, excess lettuce and, and tops from the beets or something like that can all go into here. Also, I believe there is some intent from the school standpoint to try and bring compost uh, materials that can compost like uh, ex leftover salads and everything out of the uh, dining room. So the kids will have an opportunity to watch the compost bin work and actually see it grow and then move the compost to the gardens and work it into the soil. So that pretty much wraps up our project. I would like to thank Amy Schmidt for her assistance and for running the camera. It's greatly appreciated all the help you gave me. And I hope you have a chance to build this bin. It worked out quite well for us, and we're looking forward to using it.